come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We come at you every Saturday, you whether you're ready us. for it or not. I was not ready for how loud and proud you are right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, damn it, it's Saturday. I love it. And we're doing the Freak Show. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's the best night of the week. It yes. is. It's totally Saturday. <laughs> uh, um, of course, you know, you guys at home, hey, well, whether you're driving in your car, well, don't do it right now, but whenever you get a chance, mm-hmm. you know, hit that like or subscribe button. Yeah, I'll, do it now. Yeah, why not? Why, you're already why, texting not- your mom. Just... Slide over to the next app and subscribe. Well, you no, could just probably just, use your just, voice commands, right? Oh, yeah. voice commands, yeah. yeah, voice commands. Or wait till you get home. Either way. Yeah. Hey Siri, but just do it. Sarah, subscribe to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. <laughs> Hope that did it for <laughs> Hope that did it for everybody. <laughs> um, well, tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Holly. Yeah. Oh wait, wait, wait! Sorry, we I was didn't like, wow. introduce ourselves. Wow. We're jumping uh-uh. ahead. We're the <laughs> internet I was radio ready. superstars. Michaela, Sean, Holly, and I'm Colin. Almost said Holly. I don't know why <laughs> I have these urges. What the hell is your problem? I don't know. I think I have. <laughs> Did you some jump into her mind? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> is it the order? It's the order. It's the yeah. It's yeah. the order. Okay. I'm yeah. used to patterns, and yeah. so when we break out of the pattern, I can. But we're not out of the pattern. <laughs> This, we're in a normal pattern. That's my week. Just, <laughs> <laughs> it's just how my he mind has, works. He you remember for patterns. two years when I couldn't figure out who would go next? You, right? no, so I got some issues. It took you a long time. I'm proud of you. You've been doing really well. <laughs> that year of Zoom really fucked you up, too. Oh, oh man. That, that fucked us yeah, all. Yeah. That. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank God that's over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this yeah. movie, yeah. Uh, what do we watch tonight, Holly? Uh, tonight we watched The Cell. Ooh, from the year. Mm. 2000. 2000. Feels like it. Yeah. Uh, directed by? Tarsen Singe. Sing. sing, sing! I did it anyway. I knew. Oh. It. <laughs> I knew I was going to do it. Sing. But, but, but now known just as Tarsum. Tarsum. Mm-hmm. Tarsum. Well, yeah. The artist formerly known as Tarsum. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what do we know him from? Uh, we know him from. I'm sure all of you here have seen Mirror Mirror, um, but we've also seen uh, The Immortals. Yep. Director of the. Oh, Immortals. that was a bad movie. That was a terrible movie. Yeah. What? I like that movie. <laughs> it, I, mean, I like Henry like that movie. Cavill. It looked cool. It yeah, Mickey Rourke. Cool. Yeah. There's a the story of Henry Theseus. Cavill. Wasn't Luke uh, Evans in it? Yeah, yeah. Frida Pinto. It was yeah. the Greek, like, uh, there was Minotaur, it, it was, the Hyperion uh, bow. Yeah. Sh- Sean, it was during that early 2010s, like, mythology no, no, I, run. I, right, I can guess movies. where it came not, from. He's like, no, but which, which... <laughs> yeah, uh, I know the era. Yeah. 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 Which supernatural just, uh, sand, uh, sandal movie is it? Yeah. 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 It's, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, with not, it's not the Titans ones. No, it's the one that looks like it was made by the guy who made The Cell. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Um, also, I don't know if you guys saw Selfless with yeah. Brian Reynolds. I and mean, Ben Kingsley. Ben Wait, Kingsley. Uh, he goes into another guy. Oh, uh, the guy he takes that over movie, his the, body. The That's Fall, right. too, right? Yeah, did you see that? No, it was something I shelved for years at Barnes & Noble, and people would come in and buy here and there, and I was always curious because the cover looked kind of interesting, but I've never mm-hmm. seen it. Yeah, because when I look, uh, when you look Tarsum Singh up on IMDb, The Fall is mm-hmm. the movie that comes up as the one he's most remembered for. I skipped it. I think that was the one that came out uh, immediately after uh, The Cell. So. Mm-hmm. so I was like, okay, it's the guy who made The Cell made this, and it was, you know, but I never saw it. I was, yeah. You know, um, so he did a Wizard of Oz movie, right? Am I okay? I re- I remember like a Sci-Fi Channel Emerald City, yeah, Emerald City, okay, yeah, which yeah. was like a fucked up version of the of Wizard of Oz. Yeah, but I can never remember which one it was because there was also the series Tin Man. That was the fucked up one. That was okay. the fucked yeah. up one with Zoe Deschanel. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Jesus, we've had so many, yeah, so Who many iterations of this story. Zoe Deschanel and um, who's the uh, guy? Uh, um. Oof. I, I don't remember. remember. I don't Rupert remember. Rupert Everett. No, it's no, not. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that the writer? Alan Ooh. Cumming. Oh, okay. Alan Cumming, yeah, but he... I don't remember. All right. Yeah. But he didn't do that one. Tarsum didn't do that one. No, he did <laughs> okay. Emerald City, which I don't know anything about, to be honest. Okay. No. All right. So... This is my main knowledge of him right here. Yeah. I saw it, Immortals and I hated it, but otherwise, like, this is what I know him from. I know when I saw Immortals, I was like, okay, that's the guy who made the cell. So, right. Stylistically, is, yeah. Yeah, it looked tell. cool. You can movie, tell. I, all I remember is that movie looking really cool and being kind of boring. It's very oh, boring. Henry Cavill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, John Hurts in that movie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is that the no. one with Le- no, is Liam Neeson in that or no, Clash of the Titans? Titans. Okay. Titans yeah. 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 Release the Kraken. Mm-hmm. You know. Like, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, is it Unleash or Release? Unleash. Okay. 
Uh, so the cell, the cell is a weird one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, sure is. It comes from an era in the 2000s where, I mean, I guess you go at it from one of two ways. There was like a a, a serial killer mm-hmm. um, phenomenon happening happening yes. in movies. I mm-hmm. had no idea that was part of this movie. Yeah, oh, me yeah. neither. As far as my knowledge, my knowledge, when you said, hey, that's the image I know from this movie, that's as far as my knowledge of this movie goes. See, same. That's, that's I had seen the imagery. I had no idea there were regular people in this that's movie. That's why when yeah. I found out that both of you hadn't seen it, I'm like, they have no idea. I thought yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. a <laughs> fantasy movie. Yeah, I thought this was going to be some yeah. artsy fantasy thing, and I was... Not was, looking forward to it. Yeah. I was just like, oh, it's going to be Especially bad. that the opening, of this the opening did not scene. Help me. The opening scene, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> what like, is oh, this? Oh, and that music, Howard Shore, you are not helping. <laughs> Howard Shore, didn't he score like all those uh, serial killer movies? Like, he did, did them all. He? I wouldn't oh. be surprised. He did seven, he did Silence of the Lambs. like it. Yeah. Well, except for the <laughs> horns or whatever. Except the for the horns. Uh, uh-huh. yeah. yeah. That felt more of the. Uh, of the desert. Yeah. I like Michaela's theory that he was too busy working on Lord of the Rings at this point. So basically they just, he just sent in his intern. Yeah. And they yeah. were like, yeah, that's- we got Howard Shore. And he was like, well, you got like a quarter of me. Yeah. Here's my and best And I brought guy. all the scores from the serial killer pictures we've done before. Yeah. yeah. Mix them up a little just, bit. Yeah. Mesh yeah. them all together. Because Fellowship came out the year after this. Yeah. He's yeah. definitely phoning it in for this movie so he can put his heart into <laughs> well, Fellowship. all of his serial killer scores kind of do sound the same. I mean, you know, from that era. There's, I know. You know I was watching this and I was like, I want to watch Seven right now. Yeah. I could really go for Seven. Because there's a lot of this that feels reminiscent <laughs> of yeah. Seven. The and, oil fields and, and the desert. Yeah. yeah. And Silence of the Lambs. I got mm-hmm. that feeling a lot too. Mm-hmm. And you're, you know, um, that kind of X-Files lighting where everything yeah. is, the, you go into a room but you don't turn any lights on you use no. your flashlights to look mm-hmm. around and all that's a very you know late 1990s yeah. um but yeah i guess you know so there's the serial killer phenomenon but there's also um this like explosion of yeah, um it's surreal surrealism it's like surrealism it's all it's <sighs> It's when almost did lawnmower man come out. It's yeah, almost right. right. Yeah. That was, that yeah. was like, I'm like bringing lawnmower, lawnmower man. man. I think that was like '93 or something. That was way before this, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, the feeling is the same. Right. I, I also mentioned while we were watching this tonight a movie called Virtuosity, yeah, which I recommend you all go see, which yep. also has that feeling mm-hmm. from this movie, special effects wise as well. Mm-hmm. When we're getting into the really trippy parts, a lot of that stuff kind of shows up in that movie. As Colin, well. were you reminded of Free Jack at all watching this? I got a little bit of Free Jack. I, I forgot about Free Jack, but you know, now that you're mentioning it, <laughs> yeah. right? Because well, I remember, do you remember in the 80s they did this and it was called Dreamscape and it had mm. Dennis Quaid in it. Mm. And then even before that, there was Brainstorm with uh, oh, no. Christopher Walken. That was Natalie Wood's last movie where oh, they wow. developed like a headset that yeah. like took into, uh-huh. yeah. I so. just, I, I, <laughs> this is so random, but I just had a total flashback when I got my wisdom teeth out, the, uh, the Dennis oral surgeon that I saw was obsessed with Dennis Quaid. Really? Oh. Isn't like, that the weirdest? That person? Is the weirdest yeah. Isn't that the how weirdest person to be obsessed? How did he get that across to you? <laughs> Posters all around. <laughs> okay, me. that's oh, what I want. I'm like, how did you gather this information? You know, I, li- <laughs> I literally remember getting my wisdom teeth out and just staring at a frequency poster for a long wow. time. Wow, wow. frequency, huh? But it was like, per- like signed and like personal. Oh wow! Like, so you've met Dennis Quaid? Like he was obsessed. It was <laughs> all around. Was it? So was it one of those situations where when you lean back in the dentist chair, they have posters on the ceiling for you to look at? Was it all just Dennis Quaid staring down <laughs> no, at you? Nothing on the ceiling, but okay. it was literally all around me. That's. Right? It's an interesting personality in the, trait. In the quote unquote operating room, like yeah. not operating room, but it's a, den- it's yeah. a dentist, right? I'm sitting there like waiting for the anesthesia to kick in, looking at frequency for like a while. Yeah. <laughs> it was weird. I have a wow. confession to make about oh, no. Dennis Quaid. Oh. Uh, well, he's like one of those very he's few your man crush? <laughs> I oh, cannot <laughs> either or. I, I can't ever get past like I cannot see Dennis like the character that Dennis Quaid is playing. He's just Dennis Quaid. He's Dennis Quaid pretending to be somebody in yeah, every movie. I, I just that. I don't know. It's a mental block. Or I mean, something. to me, so he's just the dad from the Parent Trap. <laughs> yeah, right, the yeah. dad from the Parent Trap. He'll, yeah, all oh, yeah. Sorry, you know, those kids in movies. Wait, yes. Who's in It Takes Two? Oh, that's Kirstie Alley and Steve Guttenberg. Mm-hmm. That's the Goot. The it's the goods. Okay. It's, it's the, the goods. goods. And I also love that yeah. movie. Obviously. <laughs> Dennis Quaid is not in tonight's movie, though. No. no we're sorry. Rabbit trail. Sorry. Movie. Sorry. You mentioned Dennis Quaid, and I just had a flashback, and I had to talk about it. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, but who is in this movie? Uh, we've got Jennifer Lopez, the star of this movie. J-Lo. Wow. Now, she was, because um, I know was she- after Anaconda? Yeah. Was, yes. Much after, yes. right? Anaconda's like 97, 97 right? 97? Six, seven? Like? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yep. 
Yeah. And this is after Out of Sight, right? Which was, was, was no. Was that 99? I thought was that, was that out of sight? I feel yeah, like out of sight was 99. Feels like it. What is right, Angel Eyes was... fit in this timeline? <laughs> after <laughs> this. Out of sight was 98. Oh, okay. 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 So, um, an MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall yes. of Fame, says that yes, we have put Jennifer Lopez on the wall. Boy Next Door. Yep. yep. This movie. Yep. Anaconda. <laughs> there it How is. How can I forget? Sexy Netting. Sexy Netting. So, Jennifer, your certificate. Welcome, JLo. In the mail. You and we'll also up. be sending one for your ass. Yeah. I think <laughs> I feel it. Which is insured. It it's its own thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it gets uh, glamour shots in this movie. I was going to say, I feel like she gets like. She gets like a blinged out certificate for this, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Like everyone else is on the wall, but she gets like a bedazzled. It frame. Smells like that JLo yeah. perfume she yes. had in the early two thousand. Glow, is glow. That what it's called? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I had the bronzer. <laughs> it's an interesting. Ch- well, I haven't seen Angel Eyes. Uh, <laughs> I, I haven't either. I don't okay. know why that movie's so stuck in my brain. <laughs> I, I was like, wow. Really? I think you it's because her face is on the like it's her eyes on the poster, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh but yeah, I, that's a weird poster. Yeah, that, I think maybe yeah. I think that's why it's sticks. It's like yeah. all white, yeah. 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 Um, who else is in this? Uh, Vince Vaughn is in this what movie. The? Uh, yeah, this was uh, uh, he it's like psycho era of Vince yes. Vaughn. Ah. This was he's when young. he was known for obviously at this point he's known for being a comedic actor, and he took this and Psycho because he wanted to branch out and show that he could do more stuff. I'm trying to think like what. Because his big breakout was Swingers, Swingers right? The John yeah. Favreau movie. Yeah. And then he was in comedies. Because I always remember him as a dramatic guy who then became like a comedy actor. You know, mm-hmm. he started doing yeah. a lot of rom coms and stuff like that. And, and I was yeah. like, I'm Wedding trying, to, and whatnot. I'm trying yeah. to remember the chronology of Vince Vaughn right now. I'm it it all runs together. Yeah, I was like, I, just, I, was like, I can, I can name well. movies, couldn't tell you when it's they came just out. A blur to me. Dodgeball, The Breakup, The yeah. Dilemma. Yeah. He like, started out. Ah, started out in 21 Jump Street. Uh, nasty boys for the boys. Doogie Howser, Rudy. Oh yeah, he was in Rudy. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, he wasn't Rudy. Rudy Swingers, Zoolander, ninety six. in Zoolander. Just your luck. Lost World. That's oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. It feels like he was in you know genre stuff for a bit there. Yeah, and Maybe, dramatic yeah. you know yeah. parts. Cool dry place. Because f- now it's like I think of Vince Vaughn as a as a comedic. Oh right. yeah, a personality. He was really good and freaky. Oh God, he I was really great. Liked right. yeah. Yeah. I liked yeah. that movie. He was also Stumacher in the Stab short. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Forgot about that. Right. I love it. I would, yeah. if, if anything, my complaint was with Freaky was that he was not in it enough. Yeah, I thought uh, he did. Yeah. He was fantastic yeah. in that movie. Oh, I, I loved about it. Freaky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a fun movie. I liked Made. it. Made. Made came out in 2001, so that's the year after this. Well, who's our other big uh, oh, name our, in this? Our, the star of this, the in star. my opinion, is Vincent D'Onofrio. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very creepy Vincent yeah. D'Onofrio. Wonderfully creepy Vincent Wonderfully D'Onofrio. Wonderfully yeah. who mostly seemed to, at this point in time, play uh, creepy guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pretty much. There's I always say some still level, does. Yeah, I was going to say, there's always an element of creepiness to every mm-hmm. character he plays. I, or oddness, right? There's an oddness. I remember, Shiftiness. You can't yeah. trust him. Well, you can in, never trust uh, him. Quirky. Magnificent yeah. Seven. Yeah, he did like a really strange uh, read yeah. on that character yeah. that he played. And it's like a quirky. Yeah. yeah. I like to. Uh, for some reason, I think because uh, he has done both the I'm going to I'm the guy who is the authority on the supernatural. I'm going to explain it all in two movies. He did mm-hmm. uh, Sinister and Rings. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Remember yeah. Rings? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, never saw it. Knew never, he was I didn't that, see is it. Is he blind yeah. in that one? N- no. Oh, I thought he was blind in that. He's blind is in one he? of them. I think he's blind in that one. Yeah, so he can't. So he can't. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, but he knows. Yes. So that's like the Vincent D'Onofrio part that you mm-hmm. just cast him in yes. all of those. Like you know, when you got to go to the expert to find out what the hell's going on. Um, mm-hmm. He is not the expert in this one. So I mean, well, well, who is yeah. he in this? He's your killer in this. He's, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Carl. Carl. Carl Star- Starger. Starter. Starger. 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 This has really weird names. Yeah, uh, it does. for characters, I'm not sure what the inspiration was or where they came from, but I don't know. Uh, we'll just go with Carl. Yeah, so this, Carl's okay, name. so <laughs> Coral, Coral. <laughs> <laughs> this movie's not written by Tarsum. It's written no. by uh, Mark um, uh, Pro- Prosovich. Uh, yeah, Prosovich. Who I think did a lot of? Did he do like the mask or something? He or? did Old <laughs> Boy. He did Poseidon. He did I Am Legend. He worked a little bit on Thor. Okay. Yeah. So he's like a. A remake guy, or he got a property, and here you go. So maybe this was an original thing. Yeah, um, but when this came out, he he does not claim ownership to this movie. He doesn't like it. He thinks that 
by the time it was made that it didn't reflect his work at all. No, See, that's interesting. That doesn't, yeah. yeah, this doesn't feel like a, after what I've just said, it doesn't feel like a, I wouldn't call this a writer's movie. Right. Yeah. At all. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. a director or if not that, yeah, a cinematographer's right. He said movie. that it looks like nothing like the script he wrote. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. See, that's very interesting. So it's like, okay, so this is coming from New Line Cinema, right? New Line Cinema. Right. And I'm, I'm bringing this up only because obviously there's the, uh, the legacy of this. They're the house that Freddie built. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's a nightmare right. on Elm Street surreal dream sequences right it's like mm-hmm. seems like that's kind of their thing they just keep making movies <laughs> involving that right yep. they made the it movies yeah uh, those are basically modern nightmare on elm street movies um so that's basically i guess what this movie i don't know if it promised it in the ads now the ads kind of made it seem like it was a surreal fantasy thing yes that's all i saw in the ads right which i mean is true but it, that's just an aspect of it there's I- I mean, There's I don't layers. know. I don't know how you market this movie, honestly. Like, yeah. I think you have to lie alone. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, pull you it's in. Like it made gonna, me want to see. We're going to show you the most intriguing parts of this movie, and it's the surreal stuff. If yeah. I was yeah. cutting a trailer to this movie, I would just take all those surreal scenes right. and set it to a cool song, and then they just did. be like, "That's Which it." Which is what yeah. they did. That yeah. was the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, I have to watch yeah. the trailer for this. Yeah. 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 Cause I'm not, I, I don't even remember if it gave away like the serial killer plot. I'm sure it I did. Don't think but, it, I, honest, I, think, I don't think it, I don't think it did. Cause I remember advertising for this and I remember when she first meets the inner D'Onofrio and mm-hmm. with the purple, um, uh, wings, I'll call cape them. Cause the thing, cape and the yeah. wings and everything. Yeah. When he flips to the camera, he's like, Whoa, what does he say? Why where, are you, where do you come where from? Where do you that come was from? Yeah. Yeah, every yeah, 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 yeah. Shot, oh yeah. Every trailer. Every, where do you come from? I remember that. Yeah. Mm, that was like MTV played it like every yeah. 10 minutes. I was like, oh, yeah. I don't want to see this movie. I had no want to see this movie back in the day. Mm-hmm. Cause well, I thought it was all that. My, I guess maybe that's my, uh, where I'm coming from from this movie. And you got to tell me if this is also what you're seeing from it. It's like, there are movies that seem like the their genesis, the reason for being there, yeah. right, is that the director said, I can do these really, I have like carte blanche to do these really abstract, weird, or surrealist uh, segments and drop them into the movie. But mm-hmm. that's really, as a director, what my interest is mm-hmm. in making it. And right. yeah, there's a framing story. But okay, yeah. I'm right. really interested in presenting this kind of visual mm-hmm. thing, and then everybody responds to the visual thing, and like mm-hmm. he's a visionary, an artiste, yeah. and we have to hire him to do a bunch more stuff. And yeah, that's somehow. But I, the reason New Line Cinema gave it the green light is because he was like, think Silence of the Lambs. He was like really focusing on the procedural. Oh, yeah, he'll say whatever yeah. you want to get your yeah. <laughs> it's like, because he sell was, it quick, and then be like, oh, and then I he was like, this. here's my influences, you know, Silence of the Lambs, and like naming off all of these, you know, dramatic serial killer movies, and they're like, well, those did really well. Let's mm-hmm. do it. Yeah. You made yeah. well, even get Howard Shore. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know mean, because it's they, they they'd all work for New Line Cinema before, right? Yeah. Um, Tarson was so okay. I, I mean, I don't know anything about him. You've looked him up. This is an art school grad or something like that. I mean, like, what's his? <laughs> He seems that's like, really all you need to say. <laughs> sure. Right. Experimental <laughs> shorts or something like that. Mm-hmm. Essentially. Okay. Um, so he yeah. gets this and this is his first movie. Was it his first movie? Uh, I feel I mean, like it first, was. Like, studio he movie, d- right? he did a lot of um, music videos to start. Oh, there yeah. it is. And he's okay. done Lady Gaga stuff. He did a lot of well. music videos. Oh yeah. Music video. Oh yeah. yeah he did like um, <laughs> REM losing my religion, which Jesus. is a really trippy video. If you've ever seen it. Um, yeah, music videos was his big his big start, um, and and a lot of it, there's actually like scenes in this that were influenced by some of his music videos. Surprisingly, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, so, um, but also like a lot of the imagery in this movie is like basically exact replicas of surreal surreal surrealist paintings. Mm-hmm. There's Francis several. Bacon. Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah, like the that. women sitting in the field is yes. a straight painting. Yeah, yeah. The, right. the horse, the section, mm-hmm. the segmented horse. Like it's all like very. Isn't Spot the segment in Horace, um, yeah. what's his name? Uh, Giger. Isn't that a Giger painting? I think so. I mean, there's some Giger yeah. influence to like the underground caves and all this. Right. Other yeah. Stuff yeah. Well, yeah. At a certain point, we got into Alien in this movie. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That popped up too. So that's kind of going to be your entrance into this movie is like, you're going to sit there for a while and watch one movie. And then at some point they're going to tell you to, mm-hmm. I remember for some reason I keep hearing put the mask on now from this movie in the sixties, it was called the mask where a guy would put this uh, Aztec ritual mask on yeah. and then have these, like there was three uh, surreal <laughs> sequences that took place. I'm like, okay, but that's basically it. Should have been in 3D, and you put your 3D glasses on oh, can you just for the 3D? crazy. Yeah, right. <laughs> 
These are the kind of gimmicks that they used to do. Oh, yeah. Holly, w- no. watch that. Why didn't we do 3D tonight? I wouldn't have brought it. <laughs> so the costumes were by the same woman it. who did uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Correct. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, lots of sweeping capes. And some of well, right. And also the body and... suits make sense. Right. I was going to say, some look... of the costumes in this movie were left over from Bram Stoker's Dracula. I was going to say, yes, it looks like it. They were. I mean, I'm kind of shocked that it's like it is like in the pre, you know, the the opening scene of Bram Stoker's Dracula mm-hmm. where he's wearing that red whatever kind of, you know, yeah. strange armor is yeah. the suits that they use to for this experiment. Yeah, straight that, up leftovers. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess why don't you tell us what the what is the, the plot of this movie that's going to get us into these surreal sequences? Right. So the movie opens with um, Jennifer Lopez walking through what appears to be a desert um but she's wearing like flowing white clothes and it's very like majestic she's on a horse I riding like a, through the somebody desert. running away from their wedding yeah, like, this is right here. i was i'm surprised no one else thought this i was like oh rob zombies halloween too here we go white horse symbology the again first thing that popped into my head when i saw white yep. horse I'm like, i was like oh uh oh it was, it was especially a black horse. Was it? She okay. was wearing white. It was a black. Oh, okay. Oh, we, but, okay, I saw her first. Is right, okay. the but the combination <laughs> of the young boy and the horse? I was like, oh, here we go. Rob Zombie's <laughs> Halloween too. Gonna gonna proselytize about the symbology of a horse where's and all this opening, stuff. And where's my opening dialogue card that tells me how to interpret this? White yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, especially with um, with J Lo in the big white gown too, just like Sherry Moon. I was like, yeah. has Rob Zombie <laughs> seen this movie? Everyone like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. well, I mean, because <laughs> during this movie, I thought of uh, Lords of Salem which is like one of the late, latest movies that. that uses that kind of like, we're just going to go really surreal, you know, in mm-hmm. certain right. uh, portions mm-hmm. of it. Um, so, but all of this is a dream right, sequence. Right, it's a dream sequence. Basically, we find out that Jennifer Lopez is actually a psychologist and she's part of this experiment where she goes into the mind of um, her patient, who's a young boy, who's basically catatonic. He's gone through a, a traumatic accident and he's basically in a coma. Um and so she's trying to reach him by going into his mind. Like dream warriors. Sure. <laughs> I was thinking it's like inverted insidious. Instead of the things coming out, they're going inside the comatose boy. <laughs> this movie is everything. Yeah. Like Inception. It's like every Like Inception, movie. yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> wow, maybe maybe progenitor of everything. Like, I was gonna We're say gonna maybe, keep going. maybe just... this movie is a cultural is the cultural touchstone of th- this century of film. This... Maybe it all starts here. I'm saying awesome. it now. The Cell influenced every movie in the last 22 years. <laughs> you know what? I, I could think you could easily make that argument. Well, easily, it, there was Dreamscape and Brainscape well, yeah. and all okay. stuff, or not Brainscape, and Brainstorm. Lawnmore, and we can't forget Lawnmore, Lawnmore Man. Man. Right, exactly. Right. Lawnmore. And fine, Virtuosity. Yep, mm-hmm. somewhere where you're going to watch that. You will. Everybody watch first of all. Virtuosity. Okay. Stellar performance by Russell Crowe. Just bring it. Just bring it. Sean, just bring it. I might. You know, I'm thinking about it. But I can't now because yeah, it's too like, close to this. Give it like six months. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but, but then, so, okay, so we learned that, right. uh, you know, and they have, uh, this is the, the 19, well, it's, it's 2000, but mm-hmm. to me, it has that kind of 90s hangover. Oh, definitely. It does. There's definitely a 90s hangover. Their, the facility where they work in is like uh, extravagantly over designed where it's kind of all that, you know, steel paneled, you know, uh, clean antiseptic. And thing. it's like yes. underground. It feels like it. <laughs> right? Why? Yeah, like, is, is it that much of a secret? That I, it think, needs to be underground? I think all labs have to be built underground in case something goes wrong. Then it's all stuck underground. Yeah. I think yeah. like, like if like it explodes, a, it's yeah. underground. If zombies get away, it's underground. It's like a super chic bunker yeah <laughs> yes because it looks cool if you yeah. just did if it in a science, hospital room right. it's not as it's not as fantastic looking right. as and if this. you're doing science experiments we got people dangling from the ceiling like coma like it, coma if you've ever seen the movie <laughs> coma <laughs> i thought the aesthetic of the whole lab room and like the way they handled things reminded me of westworld a lot yeah like especially like the way people are suspended and With dunked in liquids the and the the show the, show, the tv yeah. show yeah I, I, I see that mm-hmm. yeah and there's a lot of it just seems like that's a aesthetic that right I, I, that you see mm-hmm. um a lot and uh you know it's uh one of those things where um I guess they've got this, The I guess it all hinges around this technology that they have and this drug cocktail that they have that allows this mm-hmm. to actually happen. So, of mm-hmm. course, we get the setup of, you know, it's supposed to feed one way where you go right. into their dream, but you could switch the feed so they could come into your dream, we're told. Yep. And um, what was the other key plot point? At one you point. Don't get lost. Yeah. You, you could get lost in their mind and mm-hmm. and 
and uh, assume that it's real and never come back. Because like if, Inception. Yep. Yes, like Inception. <laughs> and if you assume that it's real, that you believe that things are actually <laughs> happening, you, you die, can in, die the dream. in your dream. You die in real life. Yeah. yeah. Uh, man, this really does. When you say it out loud, it feels like right. very familiar. Like it's yeah. pulled together from a lot of other uh, sources. Why, yeah, this movie. I mean, it just feels very familiar for a lot of different reasons. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. As we move on, I mean, because it is going to be a thing where it's like, well, it's the style, it, mm-hmm. you know, is yeah. basically going to be the thing mm-hmm. that uh, that separates it from the other movies. Um, so, oh, and we're also given the um, the plot point that at one point we had three beds, you know, yeah, so we three, tried doing double therapy with mm, two right. therapists in one person, so yeah, now we just do two check the off the subject the and the yeah. yeah, and we're like, well, it's going to come into play. So you don't have a third suit if you're not going to use it. So yes. It's true. Chekhov's mm-hmm. dream suit. Yeah. Um, okay, but then we leave right. that plot. Right. We go into our next plot, which for is for like our, forty minutes, which it is felt our procedural. Like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> serial we leave it for a while. <laughs> yeah, and then go back into. Cut. I kind of liked it though. Like, yeah, me because too. because then it's like you get a nice. I, break. I got like sucked into that world, so then it's like, oh wait, mm-hmm. wait, <laughs> we have to go back to J Lo. Oh my god, there's a whole other movie gonna happen. <laughs> you know what was missing, and I'm wondering. I I don't know if this mm. is something that was cut out, but Pruitt Taylor Vince, the actor with the I can't remember what that uh, condition of the eyes. Yeah, you know, he's a very you know uh, re- memorable actor. Uh, he's the one who ends up telling the cops like, oh, I have this idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's oh, yeah. missing. He, like they should have tied it together and had him in that opening sequence somehow. So later when we meet him, we go like, oh, he's going to be the guy who, right? Some, yes. like I a, mean, something they, like, or was there yeah. a deleted scene that tied him into they that? They could have, but facility? honestly, just like with that, like light bulb look on his face, like it worked for me. Yeah. Because yeah. you mm-hmm. can see his eyes reading. Yeah. Like, yeah. Huh. yeah. Well, I've heard of this research yeah. thing. He's like, um, if I, if there was literally anything I could, and then you just pause and he mm-hmm. kind of looks and it's like, oh, 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 oh. there it is. We're gonna they did it without the, together. oh, yeah. because Vince was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Not so, as excited as you are. Huh? <laughs> so the, he was excited though. He was excited. <laughs> but the story meeting had to be something like, uh, we're going to design these elaborate uh, scenes, you mm-hmm. know, because we're going to go inside a serial killer's mind. Right. Yes, right. How are we going to get there? Uh, well, we're going to have uh, Jennifer Lopez. Uh, she'll be a scientist. Mm-hmm. And our doctor, and she's working on this technology that can get you in. Yeah, we'll right? put a little blankie over her face, and she'll be fine. And she'll then right also a satin have motherboard. Like yeah, how we get the serial killer to the point where you know, and you have to kind of reverse engineer all of this stuff, and that's right. like an hour. It feels like yeah. of the running time of this movie. How long is it? It's almost two hours. It felt like it. It is yeah, probably an hour um, and fifty minutes. I would say maybe an hour like forty-five. Hundred and eight minutes or something okay. like that. All right. Um, okay, so this uh, second then section of the movie uh, right. is the serial killer procedural. Vincent Who do we have there, and what are they doing? Yeah. And- so Vincent D'Onofrio is our serial serial killer. He is He's like um, Anton Sugar's weird brother. <laughs> <laughs> no Same haircut, yeah. 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 But, but, but blonde, yeah. 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 Yes. but blonde. Yeah. It's true. Um, so he is he has he has been kidnapping. Um, very pretty girls and what he does is he keeps them in this like underground bunker and um, it's like a glass cell that it eventually fills with water and they drown but he keeps them there for like 48 hours um, and he like videotapes the whole thing and there's like a live feed to his basement when he's where he's watching this happen Um, and then when he's finished with them he basically just dumps their bodies so that's how the FBI is like following him but he usually dumps them in water, right? Is he what dumps it sounds them in like? water. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And he water is the connection here. Yeah. He, cl- he cleans them all up. He and cleans he, he's them. He's making yeah. dolls bleaches out of them. them. He bleaches yeah. them. That's yep. it. Yeah. Because he has like, I mean, that's I guess the thing. It's like yeah. you know, whenever you get into these kind of hyper stylized things, you're like, wow, this, these serial killers like they they go all the way. They have the clean antiseptic room, the cell where you you know have mm-hmm. your victim. And then they have like, you know, because I think that's basically like this crazy elaborate. And this is like three years before Saw, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, where you, you know, have this contraption where you, it's just weird, right? He, <laughs> so he kidnaps women, mm-hmm. brings them out to this outpost in the middle of the desert where he has this underground facility, mm-hmm. puts them in this room. And then it's all automated. Yeah. It just kind of, the sprinklers come on every couple of hours, I assume, and mm-hmm. gradually fill the room with water mm-hmm. for his enjoyment to watch, like when he's at home. Mm-hmm. And then once they've drowned, his whole thing is like he's trying to make them into dolls, right? Is that 
Yeah, essentially. Yeah. He's got some obsession with like white and purity. It's purity. Too. It's a purity thing. Be- it, but it, right. even his dog's white. Like yeah. everything is about it's it's a whiteness. Um, it's a psychology thing because we find out later that he his whole ish, his whole issue started um, when he was triggered as <laughs> this a little. Is why religion is bad. Continue. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yeah, um, <laughs> when he was like six years old, his baptism, where he was, you know, it was like the like the. Baptist like out in the middle of a creek yeah. mm-hmm. and he's held underwater and he just like sees his dad like above him in the water and he realizes that he's like holding him under basically drowning him and he has a seizure at yeah this point he, too, and that's he? when he has okay. a seizure and it like triggers his um his condition yeah. he has yes. a virus what they explain yeah. later on is that he's got a virus which is causing this and he was set off by the baptism right this is fascinating <laughs> shit. right i don't know if any of this is true but it's no. like wow you're really going the distance to right. try and like explain yeah. all this <laughs> and yeah. He, yeah. he also hangs himself from like he suspends like himself suspension from hooks, hooks yeah. In, yeah in his what's basement? that all about yeah D- got me <laughs> he, look at, he what enjoys they, it somehow. they say for him people i know people who do this and, i and do they, too and, and i they, don't understand i it. mean i don't either but they obviously get Wait. something from it as well the hooks, you yeah. Know, it's yeah, people do it. It's like people a thing. do this in a, yeah. in a. It's like a body modification thing. Like people yeah. go, you can go to like tattoo conventions and stuff and, su- and hang by hooks like that. Yeah, it's uh, it freaks me the from, fuck out. But from legs, yeah. backs, everything. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm Facebook friends with somebody that used to do it frequently. And I had to like unfollow them because I was tired of seeing pictures of it right. all the time because it was grossing <laughs> me out. Yeah. yeah, that's. So the idea wow. here is that he has metal rings like implanted in his skin and his back yeah. and elbows and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yes. And somehow he gets his sexual kick out of taking these women, bleaching them. Is it a sexual thing? He does. He masturbates it, on her, doesn't is, he? Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. It, it is that. because um, later on when sh- when we're in his mind um, and he's the child version, we see flashbacks of his father abusing him. And at one point, he is his father is basically forcing him to look inappropriately at his stepmom and like, see That's her right. in a sexual uh, way. Yep. So his warped thinking is he's he's mixed up the purity side and mm-hmm. the sexual side with this like masochistic that's a twisty stuff. cone you don't want Ooh, which now now <laughs> now things j-lo does at the end of this movie make more sense now that you say that yep yeah because yep. he thinks that uh you know because all these twisted you know uh psycho killers have this this rationale he thinks yeah. that he's somehow saving them Yes. Right. Yes. Because this is yes. established that he had he has an abusive dad. <clears throat> right. And Before the world does something to them, he's going to do something. Yeah. Else. Wow. That is the that's the thesis statement of the most recent season of Dexter too. Yeah. That oh. was the philosophy of that yeah. big no, dad. Like, was, no, like uh, no, I'm saving them. I'm protecting yeah, them. No, yeah. like when we were watching this and you were like, wow, it's like the most recent the <laughs> reboot of Dexter. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because what he tells a story about what he find like a bird or yeah, something. It was, yeah. a, it was a white bird that he found. It was a it was an injured bird. It had like a broken leg or something. So he was tending to it, and we had already seen that his dad, like when he catches him doing things that he thinks are not masculine enough, he abuses him, mm-hmm. and and it's awful. But in for fear of what would happen to the bird if his dad found it, he decides to drown it and save it essentially put it mm. out of its misery before something worse happens right mm-hmm. so that like so he's sets saving up all those rest- women from that's his- what sets up the rest yeah. of his deranged mm-hmm. life yeah Woo! yeah <laughs> he gets a clothes iron to the chest yeah from his it's dad. fucked up Woof. yeah after a ma- vicious belt some beating ha- before that yeah some hard scenes to watch yeah. in this movie for sure mm-hmm. yeah it has a yeah. kind of a grimy like underlit uh, really, I mean, it's that '90s aesthetic, right? Yeah. The seven and mm-hmm. those type of things kind of pioneered. But it has, uh, it, it's really, it's, I don't know. You know, I thought about the butterfly effect effect for I some reason too. when I was watching this no. movie. Another New Line Cinema there, movie. Yeah, I don't know, like what was in the. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's some vibes there. Um, but the so there's there's this big police procedural, right? As they try to catch this guy, because we're we're kind yeah. of alternating. Now we've forgotten all about the J Lo. Yeah. Uh, put that scene. put that aside. Yeah. Right. We're on Vince Vaughn now. Because yeah, we don't have to go back to that until we need to. Yeah. Right. We're cutting between. She's just walking around sexily in her kitchen without pants on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. <laughs> Watching <into> Fantastic <laughs> and smoking a doobie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm with like cat. you do. Yeah. yeah. Watching for this Planet. is the that woman was of my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> so we're cutting. She's between... the woman of all of our dreams. <laughs> 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 
Well, they have the 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 Vincent D'Onofrio scenes because we're watching him select uh, the next victim, right? And we're also following the cops mm-hmm. trying to catch him, like right. You know, they've been following this guy for yeah. a while. Vince Vaughn's like the main profiler, so he like knows this guy in and out mm-hmm. as much as he can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So okay, and Jake Weber is like just another. So these are FBI, special right? agent. Yeah. Okay, and uh, Breaking Bad. Um, Dean Norris is in this. Yeah. Dean Thank Nor- you. Yeah. Okay. That's, I was going Breaking Bad too. I was like I was Breaking gonna, Bad. I'm that's like, all oh, I, got. I see confusion in both of you when you're looking at yeah. like. Eh. I was going to Breaking Bad too, so thank you. <laughs> and they're on Team Cop, and they're Cop. trying it. So I mean, it is the whole like we're gonna you know canvas all the because they find um they find the body of the last victim right right, and on that there's a uh, the dog hair yeah, which it turns out is an albino German Shepherd yeah. If my dog ever takes me down for a crime, that's it. We're done. Oh, I'm sorry. Dude. He's not going to know what, <laughs> what he's doing. He's going to have no idea. My this cat, do- I feel like this dog knew what was up, though. The I dog was watching and I barking the right whole now, time. My cat will visit me in prison to meow for food. <laughs> <laughs> he will. Meow. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Well, there's a lot of like uh, Manhunter or I suppose Silence of the Lambs to yeah. these scenes. Yes. Uh, they seem like they're shot like a Michael Bay movie. I guess that's what I was thinking. A lot of slow motion. It's very dramatic. Mm-hmm. A lot of big Howard Shore score. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's of the times. Yeah. 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 It really is. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Those cars Sweeping camera like movements. Sweeping yeah. camera yeah. movements in this movie. But it like, yeah, I don't know. It works. Yeah. I, I, I like the grandioseness of it. And yeah. I like, I like the. I like all the procedural stuff because it didn't lose me. Mm-hmm. I was still in on that story. Because that story only lasts for about. It's like a condensed version of seven. right. We get they're right. like they're almost like hey, you get the best part when they capture right. the serial killer. Yeah. Right, yeah. Whole story. it's like, it's like bam, bam, bam. It's like oh, it's a bino dog and it's a Toyota truck and then oh, guess what? We know where he is right. and it's yeah. like yes, let's do it. But okay, here's the thing. So they they he divides the cops into two groups. You're gonna look into four dealers. You're gonna look into uh, dog, ger- breeders. dog breeders. Yeah. Okay, I need this movie. Where they go to all these different dog breeders. Yes. And just imagine these sweet, like, wholesome, normal families. And, like, the FBI is coming and knocking me like, did you sell a white dog to a freak? (laughs) You know, like, can you imagine just living your life as a dog breeder and you get caught up in a search for a serial killer? Like, what the fuck? See, I thought he was going to go question the dogs. Like, did you see a murder Well, that too. (laughs) That would be, like, if if Channing Tatum was in a version, that would be that movie. Get get a picture of the dog and show it to the dog mom. You see this dog? Is this your son? Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen this dog? Yeah. Bark yeah. once. <laughs> but, <laughs> but so I was thinking like, about oh. that. I'm just like these wholesome dog breeders that right? just like get just wrapped like up a happy in this farm. Yeah, and all yeah. of a sudden like the entire FBI is like plowing through right. the field. <laughs> and I just imagine like some old man that's like, Yeah, I remember every dog I've ever sold to somebody and he yeah. you know, yeah. like, get the record. He's like nineteen seventy yeah. in the basement. You gotta go through yeah. all that. Yeah. Exactly. And he, he sees a picture, he takes off his glasses. <laughs> That's Valentine. Yeah. <laughs> he was always a problem. Oh, shit. What happened to Valentine? <laughs> See? I knew that boy wasn't no good. Guys, yes. guys it writes itself. Like, <laughs> Copyright. We're, yeah. we're, we're, what are we do? The side sequel to this movie? Yeah. Okay. Or the parallel movie yeah. happening at the same Not time. Not the actual sequel to this movie. Oh, no. no. I no. forgot. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it turns out there actually is a sell, too. Yeah. <laughs> Straight, Straight to video. Straight to video. Yeah. Holly's yeah. going to tell us all about that one at the oh, end, right? Yeah, no, there's not much. That's okay. about it. <laughs> I mean, it's, like... No, it's it, the same the, premise. Okay. It's the same premise. It's a psychologist going into someone's head, and there's nobody notable in that movie. Mm. It's, Frank Whaley, how dare I'm you? Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Frank Whaley. I'm sorry. You're very notable, and I'm sorry you did that movie. Career opportunities. <laughs> Soaring with sharks. Okay. Okay. <laughs> But this Adores. dog. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I no, can't get off the dog. Let's go back to the dog. Oh, yeah. Well, like because it. the dog, like, it gets more sinister than this. He uses the dog to catch the women he abducts. Yeah. In oh, a really yeah. fucked up way. Like, yeah. Like, he, he puts a brick behind a uh, parked car's tire so that when she backs up, she hits it. But she looks in the window and hears a dog yelp or through the mirror. Yeah. And she thinks she hit this dog. And so, what, he's trained this dog to act like it's gotten hit by a car? Yes. 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 Yeah. Man. Dog's a fucking accomplice. Yeah, for goddamn yeah. murder. This dog. They should have put him in cuffs at the end of this movie I too. Know, right? <laughs> Instead, they're just like, "We'll adopt him." I was like, "So, so well, now I'm thinking." Now, I have a theory about so that. So now there's we'll a spinoff, there. Doggy mm-hmm. Prison. Yeah. yeah. 
See, when she gets to the end, she's got the dog and mm-hmm. she's got a blue truck like he had. Mm-hmm. So some of his proclivities right, have yeah, yeah. followed her she's over. she's got the corpse in her head. Yeah, she's yeah. got a serial yeah. killer's corpse in her head. <laughs> yeah. And a little boy serial killer corpse. Yeah. Oh, God damn. Yeah. Because so, that's what's going to happen. Well, they, this is a malignant situation, guys. Yeah. yeah. She's going to get malignant. To, so yeah. many unexplored <laughs> possibilities, I guess, by this. Instead, we, they kind of do stuff that you are familiar with. Yeah. Uh, they end up going to the wrong house. Uh, or It's his house. No, they go to his house. This isn't where yeah. he keeps his victims. Right, no, they they find they go to his house. Well, first they hide in a school across the street, which mm. I think is funny. <laughs> right, yeah, because they're using the like little the, chair and the little desk. Yeah, yeah. like the bell rings. Like, yeah. 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 Then swarm, swarm, and the yeah, SWAT team goes in. he lives across the street from a school. But he suffers in the bathtub a seizure. Yes, and when they find him, he's in a coma. Yes, and it's like, oh shit, what are we gonna do now? Right. Uh, how are we going to find out where the vi- latest victim is? Right, mm-hmm. and I don't know. I I have no. I have. I have no idea if the whole water theory has any weight on schizophrenia. No idea. So we don't know if it holds I, water. Oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> you can go now. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't remember talking about water and schizophrenia and abnormal psych. That was a long time ago. No. Well, you know what else I don't. But his his um his condition is not real. It was obviously made, made up for the movie. movie. Okay, yeah. the virus doesn't yeah. exist. The no, virus that's not dorm- right. dormant in your brain. What about the water uh, to activate it? I mean, but the um, schizophrenia, that does tend to lay dormant until you're like in your 20s. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, I've heard that. That is true. That is true. But what about like, because, uh, you know, when they're like, hey, he had a bunch of hooks in his back and J-Lo's like, well, that's because they like the feeling of weightlessness. And you're like, what? I mean, schizophrenics yeah. like to feel again, weightless. Again, I don't know if that's a schizophrenic related thing. But clearly she's the person for the job because she knows this. She knows. And she's going to go in and try and reach this guy and find out where the victim is as we race Mm -hmm. against time and Mm -hmm. deploy the considerable uh, forces right. of the FBI to find this woman before yeah. time runs out. Yep, yes. before her tank fills with Vincent water. Vincent D'Onofrio films all these girls as it's happening, so they've got footage of, the, of his last victim, mm-hmm. yeah. and they show it to the scientists and be like, this is what we're dealing with. There's someone in there now. This is going to happen to her mm-hmm. if you don't help. And that's what turns j-lo on onto the onto the case so when they storm his house and like yeah. they're doing the flat the seven thing with the flashlights where they're slowly having yes. the realization of what they've stumbled on mm-hmm. have you guys ever thought about what that must feel like in real life like if you were a cop and you stumbled on like a seven Dude. situation like i feel like it i would throw up immediately of, right no, it'd be yeah. the greatest day of my life I, I, like, I, I found one. I feel like so, the things your body would like, go through to with protect your anxiety, you, though. You would have a heart attack. Yeah. No, it would be yeah. great. No, the things your body would do to protect you in that situation was, would be well, right. just shocking. Like, I mean, it depends if he was caught or if he was there. It would be... I'd be... Oh, yeah, I'd be nervous. It, uh, it's going to be... It, it, would, it would have to be a slow realization because your body's... Because like, it's just like when um you hear all the time on true crime stuff about how people... Um, when they find a body at first, I was like, I thought it was a mannequin or I thought it was a deer. Right. It's like, right. that's your brain trying to protect you. Right. you know? yes. So can you imagine being in a whole fucking layer of shit like that? What right. your brain is going to try and like do. If I, like if I'm driving down the road and I see something black on the side of the road in my mind, I'm like, that's just a wig. Yeah. I don't want to know what that is. <laughs> right. Exactly. You, yeah. you said mannequin or deer. And now I saw Dude. them both in my head, but I saw finding a mannequin in the bed. I also saw finding the deer in the bed. So it got a little <laughs> weird in my head there. I'm just like, how do you confuse that for a person? Dude. Oh, <laughs> no. Mean like I'm outside. <laughs> Gotcha. Every fucking true crime <laughs> podcast, anytime a jogger has come across a body, a well, deer. first I just yeah. thought it was a dead deer. Mm-hmm. Or I thought it was a man. They yep. never assume it's a body, ever. Right. Because it it's, doesn't help your brain you to do that. Yeah. 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 My dad found a body once. What? What? Yeah. He I'm drove, sorry. He drove past on his way to work. He had to call the cops because he saw a body in the woods right by our house, on the in the park right near our house. Shut up. Is your dad? She was alive. She was drunk and passed out. Oh, okay. Oh, God <laughs> damn it, Sean. It was like four in the morning driving past. All right. <laughs> A body. He was creeped out. Yeah. yeah. It was a that body. Is, that is a person. It was a living it was body, body. He didn't know, alive or dead. Yeah. <laughs> Schrodinger's body. <laughs> all right. So then, <laughs> we've gone <laughs> way too far off. Track. Well, we still yeah, got to pack all, all the I'm like, yeah. all right, we got to go into the serial killer's mind. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the virtual reality portion of this movie. And I mean, aside from saying surreal, how can you describe what we see here to the folks at home? Colorful. It's very you ever see that bright. screensaver of the pipes from when like Windows ninety five? Mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of feels like that. 
Yeah, because we get a couple. It's like of, a tool video went to get into it. It is like a tool video, <laughs> right? Or and a nine inch nails. Of, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nine inch nails videos actually heavily influenced this movie. Oh, I'm it sure. It feels like it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Again, another seven thing. You've got yeah. that skip frame thing, yeah. like Jacob's ladder, or, yeah. or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's so some very very bold colors, very like very dark like and reds textures. and blacks uh, textures yeah, yeah. a lot of textures but lots billowing of fabrics yeah. Yeah. yeah everything is the contrast everything is either really soft or really sharp yeah or really like shiny and, and i love this contrast as we were just talking about like their lab which is all smooth mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. shiny and silver lots of ornamentation like anywhere they yeah. can cram detail or yeah. ornamentation like even in when they're just having there. people on the screen the detail creeps in yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's kind of cool it was. No, I don't, yeah. yeah. And anytime you can put moving particles in the frame, you yes. know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've already established that, you know, there's a psychology that we learn about, you know, that she tries to reach out to like the child version of the serial killer, right? Is there. Mm-hmm. Right. He seems to exist as both a child, an adult, and this uh, king of his own little twisted kingdom. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So he shows up in multiple forms as this devil creature, yes. king-like mm-hmm. I creature. I think she says he is, because he's in on himself, he is self-actualized inside, so he has become the thing he always wanted to It's be. all the versions of him. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah, he's yeah. like, he's become the ultimate version of himself yeah. inside right. his head. Because is what she, she's dealing yeah, with. Yeah, because she sees, like, she sees the kid version, but she also sees, like, the current version, mm-hmm. and then she also sees this, like, grandiose demon king. It's like split. It is very splitty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would have rather seen James McAvoy do it, but I don't think he could have. Well, I mean, that would have been awesome. Yeah, but D'Onofrio. I, I like D'Onofrio. I know, I do too. Because I don't want to the... put down his performance. He is stellar doing it. Mm-hmm. But is there a lot of? I just wonder. You know, is there a lot of acting in those scenes, or is it like you're posing actors to you know have like these kind of you know visual tap blows or something like that? It's like. They don't really have to act. They just have to kind of react to like, oh, I'm horrified or whatever. And I don't then know. just pose. And I mean, the images are awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the, the thing. They look very cool. Yeah. You know, as yeah, you're looking like, at. But like you were saying earlier when you were talking about Dennis Quaid, it's just Dennis Quaid. Vincent D'Onofrio becomes these people. Yeah. You know, you can't just have any actor do this. With massive headgear or crazy. But it's beyond that. It's beyond that. Like it's it's the look in his eyes, it's the contortion of his face. It's, he it's is, the way he There's a dedication to what he's to what he's doing yeah. that like we, I don't know. Again, this is why James I you said split and James McAvoy, mm-hmm. because another actor who was totally dedicated to that performance. Yeah. Can you imagine that movie with anybody else that does not work? No. Right. Split, but, like, I mean that also might be the case for this one because mm-hmm. he is doing stuff. Right. Like I mean uh, I think uh, if, just because it all comes together, I feel like Ray Fiennes kind of did a very uh, a different version of this in Red Dragon. You guys ever seen Red mm-hmm. Dragon? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kinda, yeah. It, it feels kind of sort of the yeah. same. Who was the this guy? Is, in, uh, was it who was in Manhunter? Uh, Tom, Tom Noonan. Noonan. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. God, he's yeah. chilling in that movie. Yeah, he's yeah. scary. Oh, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's like even you know, obviously the costumes and the makeup are fantastic. But even like the when he's just himself and he's just like hunched over the bathtub talking right. to her as himself, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like. Yeah. Not everyone can do that. Mm-hmm. The movements. Yeah. He, yeah, I, I wonder if he had a coat. I'm sure it. he did. But mm-hmm. especially when he like when he's doing the handstand in the corner mm-hmm. and then he flips over and his yeah. arms. Yeah. Are, yeah, 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 he's, yeah. Going, he's doing like the, the jester thing. That no, felt that's, very I Pennywise. Know, I that's him. But that movement scares me. It's like, terrifying. If coming at me. Yeah. Like, it's no. terrifying. <laughs> He said in an interview that after his wife saw this at the premiere, she <laughs> she wouldn't sleep in the same room with him for two weeks. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, wow, there you go. yeah, because be like I don't yeah. know. <laughs> when, <laughs> when she first goes into his mind palace and <laughs> yeah, there we go, and is like kind of walking around, but that we see the dissected horse. Yeah, when she goes into that room with all the boxes of all the women oh, and all God. their different like. Mm. Uh, the dolls they're done up as with different I don't even really know how to describe it's, it like different torture devices yeah, it's, like and they're, it's like they're all um, positioned as like wind up dolls yeah. yeah but they're all in this like disfigured and tortured disfigured and, like S&M corpse stuff but also it's, colorful and doll like yes. and it's it it's was very, really unsettling I didn't like it yeah and it's terrifying it yeah, it made me real uncomfortable. It's really uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Very, yeah, there's striking images all throughout oh, yeah. this thing. Um, 
eventually, uh, you know, um, Jennifer Lopez does get lost. I guess that's the key plot right. point. Is yeah. She gets lost in his mind. Yep. Mm -hmm. He and captures her. He's got a thing with putting a collar on all of his victims. Mm -hmm. yes. And so when he gets her in the dream, he, he gets her um, from behind and he gets a collar on her. And that's like it. She's in the dream. She's. Mm -hmm. And so then she adopts his. Uh, she thinks it's real. She's like a, yeah. a ornament in his palace i right. guess at some yeah. point a trophy yeah yeah and so that His means slave, really, it's yeah. gonna be up to vince vaughn to become that third person and zap himself into the dream to go get her of course yeah. he has I'm no training it. but he is an fbi profiler right it's like when mm -hmm. we were watching i was saying he he knows him better than anyone. He's been following all of his crimes. He knows his mind better than pretty much yeah, anyone but else. Would. Now, know this stuff. Well, no, right. no, yeah. he knows, it's like he knows the written version of his mind and right. not and now he gets to experience the visual part right. of right. that. Right. Which is got to be well I mean just look at the way it affects him in the movie. Right. Movies. Yeah, because it's not like it's psychology. It's like you're you're in this and alien you're experiencing world. Experiencing it, you're feeling yeah. it according right. to what uh, Jennifer Lopez said earlier, right. she feels those things, so he's getting all that too. Right. Well, Vince Vaughn gets to feel something because oh, uh, sure he gets captured, and then oh, yeah. one of the movie's memorable scenes I remembered. Yeah, I remembered the the split up horse. I remember split the guy horse. with the big cape that went around the room. Oh, yeah. Cool. Um, and I remembered Vince Vaughn getting uh, gold. Braveheart. Vince Vaughn. Uh, or I mean, Gold uh, D'Onofrio yeah. going yeah. after Vince Vaughn. Yeah, because yeah. he looks all he's got contact lenses in, and he's bronzed or golden or whatever, yeah. and he's I, like I pulling like, his guts out on a spit. Mm -hmm. I love this version of him because he's very like tee hee, like yeah, like mm. doing his fingers together. He's like, he's like an evil queen from Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, he really is. Yeah. That's what it feels like. He really yeah. is. And he's just like <laughs> humming, and it's so trippy. It's yeah, so he's creepy. very excited to be doing what he's doing at this point, which, as you yeah. said, is untwirling <laughs> Vince Vaughn's intestines. Yeah. Yeah. Gross. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which was an actual medieval torture device back in the day. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I know I saw Braveheart. It, that did happen in Braveheart, right? Or I, thought something did, similar? I, I thought they just, yeah, I thought they just, yeah, I thought they just cut them yeah, open. Because okay. I mean, they did that too. They just disembowled people. Like, but yeah. Thrones? I've seen I remember seeing that somewhere <laughs> else. Uh, Maybe. So, but he's able to, in this uh, moment, bring J-Lo back. Right. Into, he's you know, read her file. He knows her. So he's telling her things about her past to try to snap her out of it. Yeah. Yes. And they team up. Nothing nice, though. Nothing nice. Remember when your brother died? And I like when he's like, I'm really sorry to have to say that to you. <laughs> he did apologize. <laughs> he did. But they're pulling out my entrails. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we got to go. Why and have they, they not just developed a safe word But that's like, yeah, that, that you, you can go in and just say the safe word that wakes you up? Yeah. Because yeah. there seems to be like some kind of. Uh, you know, audible coding that's given to like when mm -hmm. you wake up, you have to come out of it slow. Right, These, like yeah. phrases that you have to repeat to make sure right. that you're actually centered mm -hmm. as a person. Yeah. But all that goes out the window in the urgency of the moment. You know, um, interesting enough, in the original version, um, the story that Vince Vaughn tells to snap her out of it is that she had an abortion, and audiences oh. did not like that because oh, they what? did not sympathize with her anymore. Uh, well, that's uh, sons of bitches. That he? yeah, that actually that actually makes more sense for the movie though. It because, does. Yes. Like yeah, who would know that, right? I mean, like I, so that is yeah. a good. You I mean, know. I, I guess I do. Like I get it. Like oh, your brother like was in a coma and he died, so that kind of relates yeah. to what she's dealing with now. Yeah. Right. So it still works. Right. But yeah, I just mm -hmm. that kind of pissed me off. Yeah. And also, <laughs> Vince Vaughn has that scene that you see in so many movies where the hero and the heroine get together and share their past trauma. And so he apparently came from a, a household of abuse. But his sharing seems like this guy should be in therapy, first of yeah. all. But his sharing seems a little bit Well, she the is top. a therapist. He was talking to a therapist. So. <laughs> well, even as like that's <laughs> but that's telling him, uh, you know, that's a cop telling you the worst thing he's ever seen. And I don't know if I want to know. I know. The worst thing a cop has ever I seen. I know. You're like. And he <laughs> explains it in great detail to her. But she's a therapist. Yeah. She, does. she is a therapist. Therapists have does. to listen to shit like that all the time. It's mm -hmm. literally their job. Wait, is she a therapist or psychologist? Well, she's a therapist. She's talking to people. She's, yeah. I, they have I, a similar I, purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Still. And his yeah. point, I guess, is that, like, you know, you can come from a terrible background, still so not torture people right. you know mm -hmm. you sure like he's like i'm i'm pretty sure um <laughs> he he's, no, he's like he's like 100 like percent. Yeah. he's he's sure which i like that they never go into detail about how he knows that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they just leave it at that 
Because they didn't even really, when, you know, you kind of, Freddy Krueger does this kind of stuff too, or Pennywise or Vincent D'Onofrio on this movie where, you know, he, I thought he was saying something to uh, uh, Vince Vaughn, you know, in the dream sequence, like torturing him and saying something about his past, but you can't really hear it. The sound mix or whatever, it's all Mm -hmm. distorted audio. It sounds like you're underwater and things are slowed down and all that. Um, so maybe they were, there was a little bit of that, you know, mm-hmm. like needling the mm-hmm. hero with the, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, personal details or whatever. Um, but he's able to solve where the, uh, victim is being held because of right. a symbol that he sees that, you know, he wakes up and he's like, ah, right. In the dream, symbol. in the dreamscape, he sees the representation of the girl in the water filled cell and all over the cell, there's this like symbol that he recognized from like the operating table in his basement. It's the same manufacturing symbol. Mm-hmm. So he snaps out of it and is able to call his cop buddy and be like, Find out where that is. Find out everything about that manufacturing company. And so he goes off to have like the the traditional hero role of this yeah. type of movie. Yes. We're going to summon the helicopters. And there's the line of squad cars extending to the horizon as we're rushing to this location so we can rescue this right. woman. Uh, meanwhile, J-Lo goes rogue because that's what yeah. you do. You're yeah. always like, no, there's certain procedures that we yeah. have to do, but not in a yeah. moment of crisis, we throw all that away. We lock people out of the room. We dose yeah. ourselves. With she the- changed the combination. <laughs> She's giving herself yeah. drugs. She did all that really fast. She though. did. She's going back under the blankie. And she confronts uh, Vincent D'Onofrio. She shows up as a nun, yeah, I guess. But this time so- he's Virgin Mary. Mind. Yeah, they have switched Virgin the feeds. Mary, yeah. Yeah, they have switched the feeds. And uh, this time oh, that's right. He's yeah. in her mind now. Yeah. 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 He's in her house, God damn it. That's right. But so, you should never do. No, well, at first it's just the kid, but then yeah. like Cuz that's her that's her goal. Is she wants she's she's been in contact with this kid version of him. Yes. And she's like, "No, I can still save him." Yes. I have to go save the kid because I refuse to leave him behind. Right. Which, and her Which like why? Why? Sure. Yeah, no, I mean, I why do we need her, her she feels like she's got an obligation. But like guy. it is a part of his psyche. He's like that it's a part of a serial killer psyche. There's nothing to actually save yeah. here, you but know? I think that, that's like part of her character, though, is that mm-hmm. she always gets too invested. I mean, there is that. Yeah. And also, we, we've never been in the mind of a serial killer. We don't know what effect that will have on you as far as like. But we've told this guy's like straight up comatose. So, like, yeah, what, we're told what that difference that's is That's an incurable make? condition. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, wh- who cares? Like, <laughs> right, why yeah. does this matter? Yeah, she's uh, going so we back can cross cut it with another event of almost the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, somebody coming out of water, somebody going into yeah. water. The symmetry works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, for no other reason, that's what they're going it's true. for. And that had to be what they're going for because mm-hmm. otherwise it makes no sense, right? You right. know, but it's dramatically, I guess, oh, yeah. satisfying just because of the, you know, as you're saying, the 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 overall spectacle of it. Yeah. The score that's cranked up. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, that's a good thing. To, I, li- I like the imagery. Like, you well, know, yeah, he's, I mean, by he's, the he's, end, he's like holding the, her, she's holding him. Yeah. And I like, you know, when, forth. you know, demon version of him shows up. Oh, the whole place and, starts going. And she, he's the, like, the darkness sneaks he's in. He's like spinning around in this like orchard of her world. Like, it's just cool looking. Mm-hmm. It's trippy. Mm-hmm. But she drowns him. Well, yeah. <laughs> in the dream. Well, <laughs> well he asks fights. her to. He asks her kid, to. Yeah, yeah, kid version asks her to. She, right. She After fights she, with them. Fight, yeah, yeah, she fights with demon version, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, the, the gold arrows and the sword. Yeah. That was all really cool. Yeah. yeah. We're talking fighting like martial art. Like, uh, yeah. She's fighting him. Yeah. Like she she's pit- in a suit of armor. And yeah. She's like, <laughs> she, like, motion, kick she like pins him down on the ground like... I don't want to say... Crucifixion like, style. Yeah, it is. I know. It's, it's, oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's crucifixion hand. style. And she's like beating the shit out of him and then pulls out her sword, mm-hmm. stabs him, and he's like, oh, not going to work. It's not real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Which then, is weird that yeah. he knows that because like this is his like own, you know, construction, uh, mental place where he's living, you know, right. uh, um, but he somehow knows yeah. that this is a dream. Um, but if you kill the kid, you, the, in, you kill innocence. Mm-hmm. Apparently everything that came after that dies too. So mm-hmm. she murders this guy. Uh, I mean, he's a serial <laughs> killer, I guess. So we're like, yeah. eh, in the real world, there'd be ramifications, but whatever. Uh, they can't prove it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I know. That's the yeah. genius. Well, even knows it. about this. Yeah. yeah right. because they can't prove it. The FBI. Like, well, she went into his mind and murdered his inner child. Yeah. And the cops are going to be like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sure. Yeah. Because right, that's, well, that is dismissed. the reaction, right? Because uh, Vince Vaughn is basically, well, as far as the FBI is concerned, you dosed me. And I remembered uh, something that I had already seen right, and then solved the case. Yeah. So it doesn't, you know, basically says that all the stuff that happened could have been a hallucination. Right. So and I'm sure it'll be swept under the rug. Scott free. Mm-hmm. Bam. 
He rescues the victim. Yep. He gets finds there in time. the, the Just in hidden time. room. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, actually, he's late. She survives. Yeah. That's through true. her own ingenuity. Yeah. That because is she true. breaks that pipe to, right, to breathe put a, air under yeah, her mouth. To breathe through yeah. until yeah. he yep. shows up. Yep. So when he first helicoptered to the area where the manufacturing facility was, and they said it was like underground or whatever, and then you just come over the mountain and see that big flat plain of grass that goes on for forever, my heart legitimately sank. I was like, like, there is no way he is getting there in time. Because it's like, Mm -hmm. okay, you have like... Uh, how many hundreds of acres that you know it's within this area yeah. like mm. but there's only one structure yeah it was like mm-hmm. the yeah. the like rundown barn and then like the silo thing mm-hmm. yeah. and yeah. the generator he follows yep. the cord to the generator to yeah. the trap door but yeah I was like there's no way he's getting there in time like because mm-hmm. yeah. they said this was a manufacturing facility those things are fucking huge yeah. like who knows yeah. where it could be I kind of at some point in the movie I kind of wanted them not to get there in time I don't know. I, the certain version that would have been the, a dour end. Yeah, well, I, know, man, I know. What a certain <laughs> point in the movie. At, after I got past the point, I'm like, oh no, it's better that she lives. But at a certain mm-hmm. point, I'm like, it'd be interesting if she did not live. And then he. Yeah. Well, the first died one, and, the first girl doesn't live. So. All right. Yeah, I do kind of wish the movie would have just ended at after that. Like as soon as like we get that shot of him holding her oh, in yeah. the tank, and then you get the shot of like J Lo like coming. Yeah, that would have been back, been back online, it. like in Westworld, bring yourself back online. Mm-hmm. Like that's where it should have just yeah. stopped. Is right there. That'd I didn't need the whole mm-hmm. wrap up conversation. Yeah, yeah, it does have like a coda that's basically you know, are we supposed to like Sean said before? She does have a truck and the and the dog. Um, is there some kind of carryover from the uh, the killer's psychology? Because he, you know, mm-hmm. she absorbed part of his right. psychology and then disconnected for he died. And so is some of that still left in the movie doesn't really kind of I mean, I guess if those visual cues are saying it, then maybe that you know, they're implying yeah. it. Right. But otherwise, it's like, you nope, would, you saved the day. You would think they'd explore that in a sequel. Mm-hmm. You would think. Yeah, no. Even if they had to like just keep the same character but recast J Lo, like you could have done, you know, some different version of continuing this story and all that. Right. But I and, guess not. And as you guys pointed out, there was another missed opportunity where like the dog witnessed all this event. So uh, how come they couldn't just yeah, go into put the mind the dog of the dog under? Yeah, because yeah. nobody because <laughs> nobody can visualize the mind of a dog. But I imagine it's a lot less complicated than the mind of a human. So I mean, but could you do it though with this technology? Can you sync up with it? Maybe the incompatible right. brains you or whatever. A special brain. dog suit. No, a little dog to. suit. Yeah. Imagine just pulling back. Does does J Lo become a dog version of her? Well, it's no, they take a therapy dog. They hook up a <laughs> therapy <laughs> dog, <laughs> and they have the therapy dog going the other dog's Jesus, brain. That's brilliant. <laughs> All right, now tell him <laughs> yeah. that he has a problem. He has an eating disorder. Yeah. Right. Cell three, New Line Cinema. We're, we're yeah. laying it right yeah. on the line here for If you. nothing else, could we just start making those <laughs> shitty <laughs> fourth in line, fifth in line we sequels could. direct to video? I mean, yeah. But you could. Cell two was one of those. Okay, <laughs> okay but our scene already doing earlier. I'm saying we could, just, we could write this. Our scene yeah. earlier with the dog breeder, this all works into the same movie, guys. <laughs> oh, We've true. just yes. written the dog version of this movie. Yeah, true. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess that uh, brings the us kennel. to the conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there it is. There it is. Right. Copyright that shit. Cell three, the kennel. Cell three, the kennel. 2022 20, Saturday Night Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to copyright that one. Right, Somebody's going to write it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, we're going to go around the table and tell you whether or not you should watch the cell. Uh, but first of all, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to call on our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I don't know what. Want to know what's going on? Yeah, his head. Think, I'm afraid. What, would you? Because he's got all the hooks on his back. So I would yeah. rather. He's like, I would rather inner space style and venture through his body, like shrink yeah, me down yeah, into yeah. a little spaceship <laughs> and let like me go the, through like magic school bus. bus. Yeah, yeah. 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 You go like that. I would rather do that. <laughs> Technically, than go into his mind. Yes. <laughs> who knows where you'd end up, what be, <laughs> or it, who you'd end up in? Is it uh, Osmosis Jones? Is that the movie? <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. Oh, like Osmosis Jones. Yeah. All right, I prefer Joe Dante's Inner Space. Yeah, yeah Inner Space. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen that in a while. I remember that being pretty good. It's a good movie. Uh, okay, well, we should uh, let the good folks at home know how they can uh, write into this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Silent Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. They can email us. Silent Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, The Cell, Teresa Ann writes in, 
and says the cell is the best mtv music video without mtv or music ever yeah <laughs> i mean yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Maya Madsen says, I love the artistry and the effects. The framing story is throwaway. It's all about the visuals. Pretty much. I can see that. Pretty much. Mm. Uh, Adam Kaler says, I think the trailers convinced me I was watching a different movie. The visuals were great, but I wanted more from the story because I thought they were on the right track. Sometimes I feel like movies like The Cell or a Nightmare on Elm Street series don't quite go far enough where imagination and the budget could take them. Freak Show, can you think of a movie that pushed the bounds of abstract visuals that you thought reached for the stars and achieved it. Love more, man. The fountain. Oh, the fountain. I'm not entirely sure what that movie's about still to this day, but yeah. it had some really cool visual and really trippy, weird stuff, just like this movie. Yeah. yeah. Didn't, 2001, right? I mean, mm -hmm. didn't one of, What Things May Come, wasn't that? Oh, yeah, what, what, what Dreams, dreams may, may Come. What Dreams May Come. Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a sad that movie. That is such Holy a sad shit. movie. Yeah. 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 Anything by David Lynch, I suppose. But yeah. I don't know if they, you know. Reached for the stars. Yeah, visually the mm -hmm. achieved it. Are you surprised uh, to know? Are you surprised to know that Twin Peaks was a big influence on this movie? Mm -hmm. No, uh, Devil's, <laughs> Devil's Backbone, maybe. Is that visually really what? surreal mm -hmm. though? No, uh, Pan's Labyrinth. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to. There's some animated thing I saw that was freaky. Huh. Um, Travis Legler says this movie has some interesting ideas. I do remember this being one of the first movies where I really started to have a lot more questions about the ideas presented in the movie than I feel like I got answers. Still, it's interesting and fun. I haven't seen this after its release, so maybe it's time for a return. Question I mark. I don't know that I'd call it a fun movie. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. It's an interesting movie. Mm -hmm. Yes. Michael Whitaker says it's an interesting movie. I remember <laughs> rewatching it a few years See? ago and was more surprised about Vince Vaughn playing a straight man than any of the visuals. D'Onofrio is also a great psycho, psychopathic, psychopath, psyche parade of characters. Mm -hmm. He said it was pretty good overall. Uh, Anthony Levia says it's not as good as similar films such as Silence of the Lambs or Seven, but it's still worthy of a watch with stunning visuals. An action yeah. dude writes action in action dude. and says, I know it's visually interesting, but I don't like it. The cell is almost <laughs> too surreal in presentation for its own good style over substance is my take on it. But Vincent D's role as Edgar bug in men in black was a, <laughs> was subtle compared to this. Plot. <laughs> True. Yeah. He's not subtle. In this uh, movie. That's for I like this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last week we watched a movie called may, uh, Joey oh. Blythe, who hasn't heard the podcast at this point that uh, he wrote in, said, uh, my heart jumped when you said you were going to do May. Angela Bettis is also on par with Sissy Spacek in Carrie, mm. which Angela Bettis was in the same year as May. Mm -hmm. She plays these types of roles so well, you'd often start to wonder how she is in real life. I wonder. I After, do wonder. I do yeah. wonder. Yeah. I'd love to see that's the type of people I'd be like. I'd love to meet you and have a conversation. Sam, do the get lunch sometime? Just, I just want to talk to you. She needs to hit the horror convention circuit. She'd do well. I'm going to have to look up interviews with her or something. Mm -hmm. just, yeah. how, just to see how she is as a normal person. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's not normal in my head at all. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we apologize if you wrote in on uh, Flesh for Frankenstein because we ran afoul of the, uh, the, the censorship police uh -huh. on Facebook and now I have a strike again. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. As predicted, you We're can't, wanted podcasters. Yeah, strike one. <laughs> you can't post anything from that movie. Uh, no, not getting, really. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe cover. maybe don't post a naked woman. Yeah, Colin, did, Colin did, do did, black did, bars did, next yeah, time. I Censor it. Well, <sighs> I, I'm not saying I agree are with you, it. Are you, but, yeah. are you calling for censorship? I'm saying Jesus. in this case, we have to. <laughs> yeah. Twitter's okay saying. with it. Twitter's the wild. Yeah. <laughs> like, Twitter's, Twitter's, yeah, Twitter's the wild. Zuckerberg is, <laughs> is very offended by female nudity. Yeah. Especially if there's blood on, on the yeah. boobs. Uh, Colin. Yes, Sean. What'd you think about tonight's movie? The cell. the cell. <laughs> the cell. The um, cell. I think overall, I'm going to say I recommend it. I think it's because um, the visual style of it is so, um, it makes an imp quite an impression. I mean, uh, you know, I remember, I think it was, um, it wasn't Werner Herzog. Or also one of the, you know, great. Oh, keep going. Uh, yeah. He <laughs> had a quote, I think Roger was it, Ebert. Was it something was it, too horrible to watch? So he'll just, he's going like to listen. see the baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot well, about I, that. <laughs> I think he said something. I remember, I think it was in Roger Ebert's review of What Dreams May Come. He said uh -huh. that, you know, Werner Herzog once said, like, cinema is uh, kind of always on a search 
for new images, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> and um, it does seem like in the 1990s, they did go through this period of like, you know, the what computer effects were kind of right. um, mm-hmm. uh, presenting. It didn't really feel horribly computer generated through a lot of this felt like you know scenes and mat or sets and mat paintings yeah Mm -hmm. i think they used a lot of set pieces for this there is a lot of wonky computer computer well not a lot there's some there's There's some there's some what do we say it was the uh the video the music player Oh, oh, like yeah. it was the Windows, Windows media, media player. player. Yeah. yeah. Windows yeah, yeah. media player. Yeah. I like the, the CG on the inside of the horse guts was a little, uh, a little rough. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was cool. Yeah. The horse is still, it's bisected and yeah. it's glass panes, but it's still alive. Yeah. Right. So like it's heart still beating. Right. You know, its ears really, are still flicking. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, cool and gross, you know, mm-hmm. so that kind of stuff, it kind of gives it this like, you know, like, oh, the cell, you know, because I mean, it felt like it was one of the first of, of that generation of stuff that uh, our movies that kind of were we're doing that um i mean i i get the, you know the, if you were going to have criticism about it it's like you know as we're saying it's extremely derivative of all these other types of every other movie we've watched yeah, or mentioned serial, tonight, yeah. yeah i mean like every scene feels like it's like well this is a variation on something that i've seen somewhere else but a lot of it that we talked about was after this movie mm-hmm. that's true yeah well, and it, seven and Silence of the Lambs. I know, but very was, heavily. Was, yeah, influence. obviously yeah. there was some, but a lot of it was after. It, so. it is a unique movie in that you, forward and backward from it, I can see movies yeah. in this movie. Yeah. yeah. Does that detract from your enjoyment of it? I don't know. I mean, it worked for me. I guess right. that's what I'm saying. I'd love like, to be able to see it not knowing about any of those other movies, but yeah, unfortunately, but, we can't live in that world. I know. I, I guess that's the thing. It's like I. Where's that machine? Maybe you know. And and so in my recommendation, I'm kind of I'm hedging my bets by basically saying like, well, I enjoy those movies, you know. So like, okay, this is in that vein. So mm-hmm. even though yes, I recognize that it's cobbled together from pieces of other ones, I'm still giving it a pass, right? Because mm-hmm. these oh, yeah. uh, surreal scenes are are uh, so visually yeah. striking. But uh, you know, it's like, do they really have anything to do with anything? Or, you know, specific, yeah. uh, you know, like all the iconography means something. Or is it just like, this will be cool if we do, you know, this setup. Um, so that can be debated. That's, you know, up to interpretation, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think you should watch The Cell. It's a, it's a cool, uh, trippy ride. Should you do an under psychedelic influence? No. 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 It's too trippy. I would say no. no. Right, it's a bad trip. You will end yeah. up like yeah. that's a bad Marvel. trip. <laughs> yeah. I have a feeling. Mm-hmm. All right. Michaela, what'd you think? This was my first time watching this. Yeah. And uh so yeah, I completely missed this movie. I all I knew was like the weird imagery and like J Lo's in it and like that's it. Like I thought it was some high art, like surrealist kind of more art film that like maybe didn't really have a plot, but was just kind of like a lot of cool imagery is yeah. what I thought it was going to be. Instead, it has all the plot yeah. from uh, every movie. Right. <laughs> was like, so I was pleasantly surprised to real- find out this was like a serial killer procedural and this, but like with this cool, like fantasy high art lens on mm-hmm. it. Um, and so I think that's really interesting. I I love when movies put themselves in a setting where they can be as crazy and ridiculous as they want. And it still makes sense like a dreamscape or alternate reality or any of that stuff. I love a reality bending movie, especially when it's done well. Mm -hmm. And especially when it has like an interesting entry point. And I think going into like a serial killer's mind is really cool. Mm -hmm. And like, even the technology in their lab for how they got into it, it did look like a little, like a tool video a little bit, yeah, the suits does. and everything, but I was into it. I thought it was cool. This movie has style mm-hmm. and it's taking big swings and I can't see anybody now making movies that look this good, like, or yeah. have this much visual style. Like everything looks like a moving painting, you know? Yeah. And I feel like if this movie were made now, it would be horrible green screen CGI. There would be mm-hmm. nothing real, nothing. There would be no real artistry because everything wouldn't be, real it all be right. fake graphics so i really the costume design is amazing mm-hmm. i love like the symmetry everything has like a weirdly symmetrical design to it mm-hmm. um that i find super interesting but the movies like movies like this don't get made anymore like story wise yes but like visual wise it this type of movie doesn't exist anymore yeah. um so i like i gotta respect a movie that takes big swings like this it, i know it, we are saying it's derivative but like I don't know how they how they successfully was this movie successful? Did it make oh, money? 
Yeah, because so, I can. <laughs> very good question. <laughs> so anyone, I'd love to know how to do yeah. it. Do we want to take guesses on, on the budget? Budget, budget, budget and what it made? Yep. Yes. I'm going to say budget like forty million. Okay. Yeah, thirty-seven. I'm going to say twenty-five. Thirty-three million. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. okay. And um, but you went over prices right rules. I yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sean wins that round. Okay. Um, and then overall gross worldwide. What do you 90, think? Oh, worldwide. Worldwide. Let's go worldwide. The Three, whole shebang. Uh, 145 million. I say 90 yeah. million. 300 million. 104 million. Damn it. Okay, okay. all right. Well. It did, but made a profit. It was <laughs> yeah. very successful. Okay. Yeah. Because like critically. It was always one of those Mixed. movies okay. that uh, New Line Cinema would would re-release. It seemed like they had the Platinum series DVDs, oh, yeah. and right, all right, that stuff. right. And and they made a sequel, so it's like there was, you know, some... right. Yeah. Roger Ebert said it was one of his favorite movies of two thousand. I guess, like, I just I can I can see a lot of people seeing the trailer and then being like, "This is not what I bought a ticket for," not liking it because of expectations. Sure, yeah. But like I said, I don't know how you market this movie without giving away everything so yeah. i think when the fbi yeah. has to enter the mind of a killer but that's they like, go to jail. this is yeah. an easy trailer put together as far as I'm I, concerned. <laughs> but to ask your audience to buy into these two completely different ideas you know what i'm saying well they hit you with it, the surreal yeah thing. exactly yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah like someone who likes a serial killer procedural might not want their weird fantasy hire mixed in with it so that's why i'm saying like you got to pick one or the other i feel like in the marketing so mm-hmm. um I, yeah, I really liked it. I enjoyed it. I was surprised. I wasn't sure what to expect. I, like I said, I thought it was going to be like some uh, Holy Mountain El Topo sort of like type movie. So I was relieved to find out it wasn't. Mm-hmm. So I would definitely recommend it. Sean, what did you think? Um, yeah, also my first time uh, watching it tonight. I was very oh, surprised quick, by this movie. Did you put my scarf on to be more arty? I was, yeah. well, just a little cold, but I'll take the arty. Sean is wearing a, a scarf. A very right nice scarf. Sean's How old is this? Did you get this from your dead grandmother <laughs> like, no. <laughs> no it's actually not old oh okay it's, just, yeah. it's, just, it's my it, beautiful it grandma crochet scarf i okay, love she's that not story. dead one of my grandmas is okay i'm just asking about the, <laughs> the okay. one that crochets is alive okay that's all i'm wondering <laughs> um yeah surprised uh surprised by this movie um i think it's an odd movie to review considering that we have seen like i said the plot the uh police procedural pro- plot of this movie in so many other movies. That is the only part of this movie that I was just like, ah, I've kind of seen all this stuff before. Um, everything else was uh, visually nuts, I'm going to say. Um, this really feels like the inside of Vincent D'Onofrio's head. I'm going to say it is. <laughs> it feels like it would be. Um, but the visual, even never mind if you exclude the visuals just based on the stuff in when they go inside someone's head. The cinematography on this movie, I think, is exceptional. Like we talked about earlier, even in just regular scenes, cameras are flipping up and over, um, just w- wide sprawling shots, a um, lot of movement in this. And that's before you even get into the surreal stuff. Um, it's if nothing else, visually, this movie will uh, it did a lot for me. Um, I was very surprised by it. I did like it. Um, what I, I, I always I'm asking would I watch it again. It is very long and there's a lot of the cop stuff in it. Yeah, I mean this is this is a good movie. Visually, I was very stunned by it, and I think you should watch that on that basis alone. Um, yeah, and then it just kind of depends on how you feel about uh, police procedurals and Jalen's ass. I don't know. Uh, I recommend the movie. Uh, I think it's very good. Um, yeah, I was very surprised by this movie. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you should watch it. Um, and then watch Virtuosity as a companion piece. <laughs> a double feature between these two, I swear to God. Uh, yeah, so I recommend... Uh, the cell. Um, after all these years, finally seeing it, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it was good. Mm-hmm. I'm not, you know, uh, I think it's uh, uh, damn good. I'll say I'm not going to go. It's great or it's not good, but pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Holly, yeah. So I was super stoked when I found out that you both hadn't seen this. <laughs> I was like, they have no idea and like knew nothing yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, this is fantastic. I'm excited. I saw for... one trailer 22 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm really excited for sense. for a new perspective on it. Uh, for some reason, I'm still unsure of why I watched this a lot when yeah. it came out. Yeah, I still don't really. I remember the first time I watched it, I was horrified. I was so disturbed by so much of the imagery, but I was just fascinated by it. So I kept coming back to rewatch it and just kind of like absorb it and kind of figure it out. I don't know. Like I was very fascinated by this movie. Um, and I still really like it. I, I, you know, I love a police procedural, like serial killer movie. That's my jam. I love it. Um, 
but the surrealist aspect of it like i it's so artistic it's so beautiful i love any movie that really takes strong influences from from other media um from other you know physical art and this one i i think is absolutely spectacular i think it represents the artistic side of movie making in just a beautiful way like the we talked about like you don't see wide shots like you see in this movie anymore like the wide the wide shots in like the desert are just gorgeous um big set pieces the costumes are phenomenal i i like this movie a lot yeah, um, this get nominated for anything for costumes and all um that? it was nominated for makeup effects was it yeah. oscar like, yeah okay it should have been yeah, yeah it should have been um I think costume should have been nominated. Too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so I think I think it's a really spectacular movie. Yeah, is it derivative of other things? Absolutely. Um, but I also think it influenced a lot of things. Um, I think it does. I think even if it's derivative, it does something different. It does something new. Um, and I really respect that. Like Michaela, you're saying. We don't get movies like this anymore. Mm-hmm. They take some big swings. In this. I feel like I say that every week, but it's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. Like we definitely don't, don't get movies like this anymore. Like. I can't imagine if something like this came out. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely recommend it. I think it's it's a very interesting watch. I don't think it's going to be everyone's cup of tea, no. but I think it's an experience in movie making styles. Um, so yeah, I think you should watch it. An experience you should have sober. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> D- under no influences. <laughs> yeah. No. Seriously. I don't. Yeah. This no. movie's fucked up enough. Mm-hmm. It's, take it. it's crazy. Yeah. You will be Vincent enough. I just, mm-hmm. like, I was thinking how bad I tripped when we saw Nightmare Alley. Yeah. Like the, and that yeah. was Nightmare Alley. Like yeah. it's not that trippy, right? But don't don't no. with this, <laughs> especially psychi- yeah. don't do psychedelics. No, so much this movie. Don't, no, no, just no. Don't be a bad time. Yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah, I recommend. All right, well that's uh, four, a, so that's free sure approved. Tiny J Lo in this. Like this is a moment yeah. where she just walks out. She's really small. She's a tiny, small J Lo in a room, which that's a nice like, forced like, perspective. Yeah, yeah. 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 You think oh. she's in a regular size room, but yeah. as she walks, there's some the really wall. cool forced perspective stuff in this. Yeah. Yeah. Even like little model work and all that. Again, yeah. visually, it's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a triumph of production design, makeup, mm-hmm. and it really yeah, is. All that. It really yeah. is. Yeah, this is one that would win all the technical awards. Yeah. yeah. But did craftsmanship, but didn't. Yeah, <laughs> but did not. <laughs> all right. Uh, next week, then we're gonna watch a movie that's chosen by Michaela. What shall we watch next week? We're going to watch Hellraiser 8, Hellworld. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the Wait. only Hellraiser starring Henry Cavill. <laughs> wow. wow. Is is Doug Bradley in that one? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. And Lance right. Henriksen is also in it. Oh, so no. If, guys, if you die in the game, you die for real. All right. Hellraiser, <laughs> oh, Hellworld. No. A theme. <laughs> Eight? Right. Hellraiser 8. I didn't know yes. there were eight of them. This game was 2005. There's another one after that, then, because there's yeah, one so. that... Oh, yeah, this uh, one's without Doug Bradley. Yeah. I just didn't know yeah. we were up in... Yep. Damn, all right. Yep. Okay, yep. so is this going to be the first Hellraiser? On... Really? No, we did no, Hellraiser no, 3. We did 3. Yeah, yeah okay, okay, there you go. Yeah. I was here for that one. All yeah. right, so Hellraiser Hellworld next mm-hmm. week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us, and until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.